has it become a norm for government and public entities to spend money recklessly? Why is there a slow response by government to address internal control deficiencies? How does wasteful expenditure impact delivery of services at local government level? And what must be done with those found to be committing fraud and corruption? What time is it? It is question time. Welcome to Question Time. My name is Mpo Tseidu. In his report to Parliament yesterday, Auditor General Kimi Mogwetu said fruitless and wasteful expenditure across the board amounted to 936 million, down from 1.2 billion in the last financial year. He also indicated that the state spent 32 million rand trying to contain wastage by cancelling irregular contracts or contracts of non-performers. This in the wake of the Treasury having promised tighter controls on the budget due to a slow economy. But what is the root cause of this wasteful expenditure? A reminder that we are live. Therefore, you can call us and air your views, the numbers to dial, 089-110-4210, the Twitter handle at question time 24. My guest today, Auditor General himself, Gimi Mogwetu. That a welcome to Question Time. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I know that you, it, is, it has been quite a hectic, uh, what, 24 hours, if one may say so, but uh, we really appreciate your making time. Let's firstly look at um, the overall state of, of uh, uh, the, 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 the report. Um, what does it contain? First of all, we, we signed off on audits across all the nine provinces, together with the national departments, uh, together with their entities, on a total of about 468 uh, audit reports. Mm. Uh, 131 of those were, had passed the test that is the subject of the scrutiny of the audit, okay. which represents about 28%. That's what we call clean audits. <coughs> and as well as the others are unqualified with findings, but others were qualified. So okay. the status of the performance, as it were, is not too different from what we ended up with in 2013-14. However, we do acknowledge in the same outcomes that there are those departments and entities that took it very seriously when they were pointed in the direction of introducing new controls. Mm -hmm. Those ones have moved forward. And when we say there's a marginal improvement, we are giving recognition to those okay. so that they don't tire. All right. They continue to do the best they can to promote transparency in financial management as well as to promote good governance over systems of government. Okay. Now, who are the worst performers? Let's talk provinces first. In so far as the provinces are concerned, we looked at all of the nine of them. If you group the Western Cape and uh, Gauteng, you could classify the two, Gauteng and the Western Cape, as the two provinces that performed very well in so far as the achievement of good audit outcomes are concerned. Yes. Um, I'd like to underline that because the performance is only to the extent that we have assessed their ability to handle their finances in a mm. manner that is transparent and satisfactory to the auditors. So their audit does not extend to things like testing the citizens' experience of the delivery of services. We don't do that. Oh, okay. So I think it's important mm -hmm. to underline that so that when people analyze it further, they know how far we went and what our limits were. <coughs> the other provinces that were on the extreme side uh, of negativity were Mpumalanga, Northern Cape, and Northwest. So the other four, <coughs> which will be the Eastern Cape, uh, KZN, and, uh, and, and Forest State, mm. and Mpumalanga will be your mid-tier type performers. Okay. But now, what are the reasons? Why are, are they performing so badly? At the heart <coughs> of uh, managing finances of an institution, particularly a public institution, is uh, for us three areas. The first area is your ability as the department or entity to demonstrate to the auditors. When you say to the auditors, I spent two million rands, all the auditors are looking for is evidence that shows that's the number one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> number two, auditors are also interested to know what exactly did you buy? Can we see based on what you're reporting in your report so that we can test whether the indeed what you claim to have bought is what was meant to be bought? Mm -hmm. 
So that's number two. <clears throat> and then number three, because it's government money, it's money that has been made available through a law of government, which is about appropriation of money for achievement of government objectives. So the third point is to also test whether you've done what you did in accordance with the laws of the mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. So those are the three areas. So anyone who has failed the audit test has failed one or a combination of those three. Now, you are quoted as saying that, um, well, you have reprimanded the country's leadership, saying that while there had been marginal improvement, the government could have recorded a higher margin of improved results had leadership stepped up the pace in addressing internal control deficiencies identified in the previous audit. I guess the point we're making is that uh, <coughs> when you deal with money, yes. <coughs> and there's a flow of transactions in the cycle almost every day. Yes. Because of the, let's take an example, a department might have uh, about 18 different sections. All of these sections have got different responsibilities to mm -hmm. achieve, therefore they are allocated budgets. When they spend every day, um, sometimes they don't do what was intended. Remember there are people in those departments who also have other ideas about what needs to be done. Mm. And so if you are slow as leadership in bringing forth the controls that will protect the public purse, mm. you will discover after a while that all that money that you thought was doing the right thing is actually no longer there. But the thing that was meant to be achieved with it is also not there. So the issue that you are raising here is that it is better for leadership to be proactive as well as anticipatory mm -hmm. in how the finances of the department and the achievement of the objectives is being pursued. So what that calls for, mm -hmm. it calls for alertness on a quarterly basis and however frequently they decide to do it so that the probity and oversight over finance matters as it happens now is not just an annual once-off event when the auditors are there. Okay. It, is, it is largely the responsibility of those people who are assigned those leadership roles to make sure that whatever it is that gets used, is used to achieve the intended objective. You also say that lack of any consequence makes the national fiscus vulnerable. <clears throat> well, I guess if, you, if you're looking at an, any system or any department or entity, uh, there are two things often that controls are designed to, to pursue. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Controls are designed to make sure that those people who sometimes get employed into a department yes. with less than the required minimum competences are monitored and supervised so that if they make genuine human errors there can be a control that picks it up that's the number one <clears throat> the number two there could be somebody who is in the department who is not just who's, who's not, it's not about incompetence but it's about them trying to deviate uh, from the established controls <clears throat> so what you are saying, therefore, is that the two, if you let them loose in an environment, you will lose track of what is going on with the finances. Okay. Muzi, you are in KZ and welcome. Bonjour, Bab. Good evening, Bab. Siapila, H.E. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Yes, uh, I was speaking to Muzi Masalela. Uh, I think one of the challenges for this uh, bad behavior of officials in government Number one, I will say the ethical conduct in terms of arrogance uh, and, and then many factors which one uh, 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 ignore the fact that mismanagement is it, a crime on its own. But for, for, for MECs, uh, also with the premiers, mm. failure to ensure that the MNE is being actually put as an effective tool to control financial uh, uh, management in departments is key, which, which shows that most of the problems it's because of a uh, failure to have proper people in terms of monitoring and evaluation. Also, the, 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 also the issue of competency. You find that there are people who are not trained. There are people also with degrees or with qualifications. But the, the, but because of the failure in terms of monitoring, it's like no one cares within the department in terms of how money is being spent, how tax man, how taxpayers' money is being actually uh, allocated in ensuring that okay. proper. proper 
proper goods and services are being right. achieved with the value for money. So I think I think if we can, if if maybe the AG office can strengthen in terms of investing in monitoring and evaluation, that becomes the program from the AG office. I think we can achieve better and save a lot of money. But right. if the AG uh, will will let actually actually uh, departments to run the M&E program, we are bound to fail. So okay. I think maybe the AG will take that as as as, as and con- put it into consideration because there are people like us who are working in finance, financial management, who are working with money. We know how it is okay. if you make error. Muzi? So I think I think if we can take that point right. to cognizance, we can achieve it. Thank you very much, Muzi, for the call. Uh, the AG will indeed uh, respond to that only after the break. But we'll be taking <coughs> your calls. Zero eight nine one one zero four two one zero is the number to dial. This is question time. Victory requires intense effort and teamwork. When you get to it, there is no turning back because all eyes are on you. When it's action time, nothing should stand in your way. Sports Life tackles and analyzes all the sports action. This is the home of all your sport news, updates, and more. Sports Life weekdays at 8:30 p.m. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. I guess today is the Auditor General, Tatukimi Makwetu. Jack, you are around Houghton. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon, good. Jack. Uh, thank you, Mbo, for having me on your show. You're you look brilliant like a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> thank My you. Qu- okay. My question uh, to, the auditor ge- <laughs> to the General Auditor. Yes. Who supervises... The general auditor. Thank you. Okay. So who's guarding the guard? I see. That's the question. <clears throat> Let me answer this question by helping Jack. Uh, I'm sure if Jack has got access to the, to the electronic media, he can go into the parliamentary website under the GSM, which is the Parliamentary Monitoring Group. Okay. Uh, which records conversations that take place in Parliament. Uh, We as an office go to Parliament every year to present our strategic plan, our own strategic plan in terms of how we're going to carry out the expectations of the mandate. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Parliament to account to them, a committee in Parliament, on our activities. On top of that, we also get audited. Oh, okay. So we subject ourselves and the books that we keep. You are also audited. Absolutely. Well, and right. we answer the same questions other people answer. Okay. And we sweat like everybody else when we get uh, taken to task on all manner of things. Okay. But our score up to now has been quite good for, for these last couple of years because we've always been of the view that it ought to be us who demonstrate leadership when it comes to these matters up front. Right. <clears throat> so we're never scared of subjecting ourselves to scrutiny. We get scrutinized, and in fact, if you go to that website in Parliament uh, where the Parliamentary Monitoring Group records uh, conversations taking place between oversight committees and us, you will see a verbatim record of what is it that we ourselves answer to when parliamentarians ask questions of us. Okay. So it would never hit the headlines as it were up to now because there's never been something that's attractive okay. in terms of what has happened. We've always tried to do what we do in accordance with what's expected and the record and the evidence is all there. So we don't run around doing these things as if we are absolved from scrutiny. Okay. Joe, you are in Mangau. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Bo. Hi, afternoon. Uh, I just want to congratulate uh, the people from the AG. They're doing a brilliant work. But I think 
as a chapter nine institute institution yeah. they don't have enough uh, power to take steps mm-hmm. uh, against people that's doing it wrong these okay. people from the government they're doing it wrong and wrong and incorrect every year every year and there's no penalties mm. they must give the auditor general more power to take steps and action uh, according to uh, uh, yeah. against the people that's doing an all thing thank okay. you Bob. thanks very much uh, joe the powers um what what happens with those who are found to have been on the wrong side of the law because clearly those who are not meeting your uh, requirements have flouted either pfma or mfma or whichever uh, other act <clears throat> let me start by explaining the powers that we have we have the power to audit mm-hmm. which means that we must be given access to the records that yes. we need to examine and once we've done that we then also have the power to tell whoever wants to know what the outcome of that audit was. So as far as you are concerned, that is sufficient power to do that which is expected of us, because it's also <coughs> quite an onerous responsibility, mm-hmm. as it were. You know? Now, if you are going to bring another power into our institution to then uh, act, it's going to be problematic, as it mm. were, I think, uh, <coughs> as things are now, because the people who've got power are sufficient in terms of these different institutions. If you look at a province, for example, and a municipality, a municipality has got a council, and that council has got a legislated power to act. Okay. A province has got a, a, a legislature together with a cabinet of the province. Yes. Both of those structures have got sufficient power to act. Even nationally, the national uh, leadership has also got power which is legislated for them to act on these matters. Okay. So in all three spheres of government, there are sufficient powers that are in place. To try and direct that power to us, we'll probably be putting it where it doesn't belong. All right. Jerry, you're in Cape Town. Welcome. Uh, good day to you. You're welcome. First of all, I want to congratulate the OG for the good job he's done. Okay. But I, on my TV, I'm not speaking to you. Am I? Yeah, 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 you go ahead, he's listening. Oh, uh, the problem is that the cater, cater people were employed in municipalities. People were appointed without the qualifications. Yes. That's why you will, you will see that in the Western Cape, where people are appointed, who is qualified to do the work, we have a, a clear oil, uh, uh, audit of 83%. Mm-hmm. And that is the problem. People are appointed without having the qualifications, and they are not monitored by the managers because okay. they haven't got qualifications either. Jerry, thank you very much. Um, I don't know if this is something that you would want to, to venture in. I guess the broader issue we've raised around the point Jerry is making is the need to insist on adequate levels of competence okay. across the board. And we are aligned with that thinking. Okay. To say that uh, the best possible way to make sure you get what you need is to find somebody who knows how to do it. There. However, it's not enough mm. because if they are competent enough to do the job, they still need leadership to set the right tone at the top. So a combination of that and setting the right tone at the top, which has consequences as part of the outcomes, is what is needed in, yeah. in, 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 uh, desperately, as it were. But how is this wasteful expenditure affecting um, delivery of services? Well, I mean, waste of wasteful expenditure, that basket of expenditure, is money that was potentially available for something else. Mm. And now it has been spent on another thing. Mm. Or, or nothing. Or something that was never received, but the mm. money has been spent. So mm. I guess that's where the effect is. Okay. Because initially when you put the budget and the request for the budget, you wanted the money to be made available to achieve A. Mm-hmm. But it was not spent on A. It was spent on something else. Because mm. either the guy who was managing the contract, which is a huge contract in that department, didn't do their job as they are expected, and they get hit with a big claim mm. or a big penalty. Okay. When they have to pop out money for the penalty, in a budget there's never a line item for penalties. Otherwise that budget won't be approved. You can't plan for budget Ooh. in the budget for penalties. Mm. It means when you pay those things as a result of inefficient execution of work, you are spending money without receiving any requisite value. Immediately that money which was for something else gets redirected to no value. Hmm. 
Alf, you are in Northwest. Yes, I am. Yes. Good, good afternoon to you, sir. How are you? We're well. Thanks for the call. Yep. Uh, I've got a question for, for the AG. Yes. However, uh, let me come first congratulate the AG for the job well done. Okay. Because we, as a public, we want to, to put confidence all on, on this job. Mm -hmm. AG, my question is to you. With short notes, who are you reporting to direct? Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, I thought you had said to Parliament. Yes, we report to Parliament. <clears throat> and we also get wrapped over the knuckles by Parliament if we do something funny. Okay. So that's the long and short of it. The rest of the technical detail I've already explained. Yeah, but sure. We don't run around <coughs> doing things on our own with impunity. So what do you think must be done to those who are found committing fraud and corruption? Let me start with uh, <coughs> the numbers that we've highlighted in the report. If you look at uh, irregular expenditure, yes. as an example, it's expenditure that has been incurred and the people that were driving the incurrence of that expenditure uh, flouted the rules and, and, and processes that govern supply chain management. Mm. And it starts there, it starts by recognizing that reality, where we say, let there be a scrutiny of those activities which are highlighted under the subject of irregular expenditure. Mm. Because the audit office has not concluded and said this 26 billion of irregular expenditure yeah. is as a result of either fraud or whatever. Let there be focus on that so that the leadership in the institution can better understand what is it that gets somebody who has been properly instructed to carry out a transaction in a particular way and decides to circumvent that process. Because by circumventing that process, you are opening the environment to all manner of potential fraud among mm. others. Mm. So I think the starting point should be to take action at that level by mm. leadership. Scrutinize those transactions and make sure that the disciplines that are there already are not being violated by people who want to achieve a different uh, outcome. Oh, I mean, um, you, you, you were saying that uh, irregular expenditure was down by 60% to 1.7 billion, largely as a result of the education department reducing its irregular expenditure from 2.6 billion to 448 million. What do you attribute this to? I haven't got the specific detail of that, but uh, mm. it's a combination of factors. In some departments, there has been a follow-up mm. after the recommendations that mm -hmm. uh, we have made. But in other departments, it's a mere situation of a lower level of activity than previously. Mm. For example, if I've got an extraordinary budget this year to, to spend $4 billion on a big uh, delivery of infrastructure, I might not have that same uh, program <coughs> next year, mm. which means the extent to which I might have items of irregular expenditure is also going to be determined by the volume of transactions that I'm dealing with. Also, it could well be to do with the fact that the controls have been introduced in certain areas to, to, to reduce the extent of irregular expenditure. Mm. And um, perhaps the, the deficiencies in this government uh, departments and public entities, um, uh, are you happy, that, are, are they tackled uh, quick enough? Is there you know, exigency in ensuring that some of these mishaps are dealt with? That's why we are saying in the report there's a slow response. Mm. It's exactly that. There's a slow response in fixing these deficiencies. I guess that's your question. Yes. Are they being dealt with fast enough? And the answer is no. Mm. And that's why we are saying that the root cause is slow response by management to deal with these uh, deficiencies. <coughs> if I give you a bank balance, a bank account to manage, just the bank account and nothing mm. else, and you've got a department that has got uh, transactions taking place in... 15 different areas. Let's say here at the SABC, you've mm. got people who purchase this equipment that you are using and other things, and you are controlling the bank account. Mm. And then you go home on Friday at the end of the week without knowing what sort of transactions came from the mm -hmm. bank and what sort of amounts went out of the bank. And then at month end, you also don't subscribe to that discipline. All you know is people have bought things 
and then money and the balancing of money will be taken care of when the audit starts. That's where the trouble comes. Okay. Because the challenge is to unpack those transactions that came from different places within the SABC is going to be a nightmare if you've got two weeks to do it. Because the invoices that you want to trace back to be able to satisfy yourself potentially could be gone because the person that initiated the transaction is now on suspension for two or three months. Oh. And you've got no way of laying your hand onto that. So all of these things have got a combination of factors. You've got factors that have to do with instability of leadership in certain positions where you had a person who was responsible for a particular control and they probably have been suspended for one or other reason. That particular control, rest assured, while that person is not in that position, is not going to be implemented. Yeah. And so it goes with the rest of the staff. So by the time the auditors come, they come into a situation where they almost have to try and rewrite or assist in rewriting the books. That no good. Thank you very much and we wish you all the best. Good. Let's uh, hope that next year will be better and uh, the irregular and unlawful expenditure will come to an end. That was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. From me and the crew, you have yourself a wonderful time. Goodbye.